All right, liberal yes. comic Bill Maher declaring on a recent podcast that he thinks the U.S. is winning economically, but his guest fitness guru, Jillian Michaels, hitting back and pointing to the high cost of pretty much everything. Watch. We won the pandemic economically. I mean, America... God, I don't feel that way. Explain it to me. I feel like inflation's um, insane. Numbers. Everything... Inflation is not insane. Bill, I, I, go buy there, a car. There's, there's numbers. I, I understand. Things, a but, house but, but it has, has tripled here. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I, I get that people... Buy some eggs. And inflation continues to take a major bite out of our pocketbooks. Since Biden took office, prices are up nearly 18%. And today, brand new numbers came in hotter than expected for January. But President Biden's good <coughs> friends over at Morning Joe insist the economy is just fine. You want to know how Biden's doing? Look at your 401k. Look at your, your stock app and see how much money you're making every hour because there's yeah. not a crazy lunatic in the White House. But these freaks, I'm not exactly sure what they think they're going to get from Donald Trump, but they're going to get none of that. Trump, um, Harold, when Trump was president, the stock market was considered not a measure of the economy. But now the Democrats want to say the stock market is a measure of the economy, but that's not really reflective of what Jillian Michaels was saying, which is the price of eggs is still really high for people. So two things can be right. I, I would uh, hate differing with Dana, but I, I do think President Trump talked a lot about the stock market. He would say... No, I know. He got ridiculed for it but, in and, the media. I, I didn't. I, I, think, I think those of us who, are, who try to be thoughtful and think about this, Democrat, Republican alike, um, you have to acknowledge we are making, we're, we're reaching records. And I yeah. think what Joe Scarborough was saying was if you're a wealthy person in the country, you're richer than you were before. Now, the second thing that can be right is what Jillian Michaels, whom I don't know, is saying. Um, if you don't feel like you're doing well, then you're not doing well. And no politician is going to shove numbers in front of you and say, you should understand you're doing better than you think. There are a number of politicians who are at home now and not in elected office who believe that they, they could do that. I've said on the show, and we'll say again, there are three dates prior to Memorial, prior to Labor Day, excuse me, that I think are critical for any incumbent president. One is Memorial Day. What are gas prices at Memorial Day? Two, the 4th of July. What are food prices and gas prices like on the 4th of July? And a week after that, because most of schools in America, we on the, up here in the Northeast, we don't start until after Labor Day, but most schools start between the first and third week of August. What are clothing prices? What are school supply prices during that time? Every presidential race has had some correlation to what those numbers look like. And then after Labor Day, we got a free for all. Uh, and whomever is able to adjust to the October surprise and has the best numbers and momentum likely wins the race. Bidenomics has not been a compelling and resonant uh, a term or package in the minds of a lot of voters. And there's no amount of telling people, even as, as great as Bill Maher is saying, things are better and you should understand that. Unless people feel that way, and we have a topic coming up a little later about the, what, the, what the minimum wage should be, if people don't have to work two and three jobs or don't believe their futures are brighter, you can't point to any amount of numbers to make them feel any better about their future. But if things are better in, in May and July and September, I hope people around the country and around uh, the political table are able to say, mm -hmm. you know what, maybe things are better than we thought. Even Larry Cutlow was able to say on his show yeah. the other day that things are, well, things are job, different he, than he was, thought. He said it was a good jobs report. Right. Jesse, uh, people are paying more than $1,000 extra a month for the house that they started building during COVID. Uh, we know that grocery prices are up. Home and car insurance are through the roof, and these are the things that are frustrating the middle class. Right, and people like Marr or Scarborough or a lot of pro-Biden pundits on TV are insulated from those types of price swings because they've been financially successful. So they don't cover inflation, they cover it up, and they think they're doing Joe Biden a favor by covering it up. It's a huge disservice because if you look at what the media covers, that's what Democrats react to. The media always asks about Ukraine, climate, uh, mandates for COVID, January 6th, and the Democrats go, okay, and they take action on all those items. The media never asks Democrats about inflation, the border, or crime, so the Democrats don't do anything. They sit back and they wait and they wait and they wait, and then they get shellacked. If you brag about 401ks, that's fine. That's a legitimate issue, but it's not the full picture because... If you're young, you barely started your 401k, so it doesn't count. If you're retired, you cashed it out, so you're now in fixed income. Who cares? Uh, whites and Asians, 60% of them have 401ks. Blacks and Hispanics, 34% have 401ks. So you're not right. getting a massive group of people to appeal to.
And if Biden thinks the economy is so good, then why did he do a Super Bowl commercial saying that cookies and ice cream cost too much? Because that way he could shift the blame on onto the companies. That's what he does. He always blames large groups of people and the people that make the world work, Dana. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't see that. <coughs> uh, but the Dems will say prices are down, and they are right. They are right. They're telling the truth. But down from when? They always leave the context out. They leave the part that, that they're, they're basically saying, in the last three months, it's really gone down. That's like saying, Your Honor, all my client did was speed. You know, yeah, but that was after he robbed the bank. So prices are still 17 to 18 percent higher since Joe took charge. You need to have that, that, that context. You just can't pick, cherry pick the last couple of months. And in that Scarborough uh, spot, he was referring earlier to like uh, people who drive Maseratis at country clubs, you know, and, and then he's talking about the 401ks. And People with 401ks, the people he was talking about, usually do fine independent of politics. That's how they got rich. They do investments to weather the bad times like now. So actually, he was ignoring the regular Joe over the richer Joes. Mm. You know, who cares about eggs when you can afford, you know, a Maserati? I like the juxtaposition of the Mar thing with Morning Joe because it, it kind of shows how you can actually hear real people versus talking heads, mm -hmm. right? It's like you, you have Jillian Michaels on and he says something that she disagrees with and she has the space to say it and he is learning in real time. Meanwhile, that can't be done on Morning Joe. That's impossible. And that's why they call it real time. Exactly. Well, Mark. actually, that's called something else. I know. The podcast is something <laughs> else. Uh, Judge, one of the things Biden wants to talk about is his accomplishments. So one of, he, and they point to that big extra dollop of federal spending for COVID that actually fueled inflation. So their biggest accomplishment is actually the vulnerability. Yeah, it created the vulnerability. And, you know, the amazing part of it, and, and I, I agree, the juxtaposition of Bill Maher and, and then Joe Scarborough. I mean, these are people who are, are worth, you know, millions and millions of dollars who not only can't feel the way average Americans feel, but they want to tell the average American how they should feel when the truth is it's very simple. The numbers are very simple. They're up 18 18 percent, some say higher, it depends on who you read, since Joe Biden took office. Meanwhile, wages are not up 18 percent. It's really that simple, guys. So you can say your 401k is great. And as Jesse said, young people aren't buying them. Young people can't even afford a house. So, I mean, all of a sudden, they want to tell us how we should feel. But the bottom line, to me, what really gets under my skin is the fact that not just they want to tell us how we should feel. By the way, when eggs are up 35%, gas is up 19% since when Joe took office. Rent is up 19%. Groceries are up 20.7%. Okay, and we are now feeding 10 million yes. illegals who came through this country illegally. Okay, so food for them is taking uh, money away from Americans. So I'm tired of this. You should feel better. No. And we'll get to this in one of the later blocks. But I, I think that we're spending way too much on people other than Americans and telling Americans you should feel good. Coming up, Team Biden just gave Texas Governor Greg Abbott a big compliment on the border. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.